Welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're doing a little bit more error handling, but focusing on the throw keyword. The throw keyword itself isn't used that much in beginner programming, but you will see it from time to time and you may need to use it, but really I just don't want you to have to code around something you don't know what it does. Last video we talked about handling unhandled exceptions with a try catch finally. Well, those exceptions have to come from somewhere like the 2 amp 32 method. Well, when this tries to get converted and it fails, this method throws an exception. So the first time that we ever saw this was when we had a method generated for us. So if you create a method that doesn't exist, a method call, and you tell Visual Studio to generate it for you, it's going to generate your method automatically with a throw new not implemented exception. And this is to make sure that by the time you call your method, that you've remembered to implement the body of your method. So if we go up and put our method call in our try, then the minute my method runs, it's going to throw an exception, which means this is going to error, jump out of the try, and the exception is going to get caught in the catch. Since it's not a format or overflow exception, it will get caught by this else, and then it's going to write the message from the not implemented exception. And we can see this right here the method or operation is not implemented. So let's jump through a really short example of how you might use this yourself. So let's delete my method here and go back to our error handling example. So let's say we want to validate our number before we proceed with the rest of our code. Say we have specific cases and we want to make sure that it fits those cases. So we can call validate input, which we will let Visual Studio generate for us. And then in the body of this method, we can make sure that this number fits into what we want before we let the application proceed. So let's say instead of a normal number, we want the user to enter an even number. So that's where our validate input will come in to make sure their input is even. So here we need to make sure input is even. And to do that, we're going to throw back to our modulus operator and we're going to say if number mod 2 is not equal 0, which is saying if you divide number by 2 and the remainder is not 0. So if this is not evenly divisible by 2, then it's not even. But we need to do something. So in many applications, a validation method would validate and return a Boolean or some sort of status, and then that would be handled here. But considering we're already parsing our input and using this catch to catch these exceptions for validations, we can throw exceptions in this method and handle them in the same place as we're handling the other cases. To throw a new exception, you use the throw keyword followed by the creation of a new exception object. So if the number wasn't even, this exception would get thrown, making this fail, jump out of the try, get caught in this else here, and then it would print this. We're not giving it any sort of message parameter, so it's just going to print the default message of base exception. So if we run this and enter an odd number, all it's going to tell us is that a system.exception was thrown. The base exception class has an overload for its constructor that takes a string message. So we could say invalid input number must be even. And now when this runs, instead of saying error and then that default an exception was thrown, it will give us this error, which is a little bit more helpful to our user. So now let's add a new condition that says enter an even number between 2 and 10. So now we have another validation to make, which would be if our number is less than 2 or our number is greater than 10, then we need to do something else. Now instead of throwing a generic exception, let's throw a specific exception. So if you type exception, you can help IntelliSense tell you what exceptions are available to you. And then you can pick the one that most makes sense for your case. Now you can use any of them, but be aware that if you threw something like file load exception for when the user entered an 11, it's not going to make sense when that exception is caught what is happening at all. It's going to be really confusing. So you have to pick one that fits your scenario. And there is a lot. So argument out of range exception thrown when an argument is outside the allowable range of values. I think that fits this pretty well. 
So let's throw that. So now we can go up to our catch and throw a new case in here. Copy this, and we can say else if ex is an out of range exception, we can say error, your number must be between two and 10. So if we run this and we use 12, we're going to get our argument out of range exception. But if we use 11, we aren't going to get it. We're going to get number must be even. And that's because our validate input method has an ordering to it. We check even first, and then we check our range. So you have to be careful if you separate these out, which one do you want to check and report on first? And that brings up the other point that while it often makes sense to throw separate exceptions, sometimes it makes sense to throw them together or at the very least catch them together so you can give a better exception message where the user doesn't have to fail four or five times before they know all of the rules. So if you wanted to leave them separate but give the same message, you could just change this message here to be your number must be an even number between two and 10. And then we could throw a specific exception here, like an argument exception. And then up here we could say, if EX is out of range or if EX is an argument exception. So now either way, we get the same error with a better message of what is expected as input. So now our user only needs to fail once, no matter what kind of failure it is, to get all of the rules. So for the other case, we might decide, well, we don't need to throw two specific exceptions. All of our cases lead to the same error. So let's just check all of our arguments in one and don't throw this out of range. So now we're saying, well, if it's not even, or if it's less than two, or if it's greater than 10, we just have an argument exception. So now up here, we don't need to check for out of range. And now with one throw, we can give our user all of the rules if they mess up. This is as far as I'm going to go with throw. There's definitely more to it, but as a beginner, I think it's plenty to know what's going on. Next up, we're really going to switch gears and go over some tricks for dealing with strings. So thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. I hope this is helpful. Happy coding and until next time as always, take care.